You need truth and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, good listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon, and you are tuning in to another episode of the Brother Leon Show. So today, we are on the eve of change. Now, I ain't going to lie. I don't know which way this is going to go because, number one, you know, God didn't give me insight like that. The one thing I will say is this, is that what I see on the horizon is that there are class wars, race wars, financial wars that are brewing right now. And the one thing that's going to be in the middle of it is the church. That's the one thing that I see. And so the one thing that I believe is this, is that we as the church, we have to begin to make up our mind. Are we going to be the true shepherds that God has called us to be? Because there is a lot on the line. Because you got to understand what the church represents. The church represents the moral compass of the community as well as the nation. You also have to look at the fact that the church represents and and is a spiritual conduit because whatever goes out from the church goes into the community. And this is why I had a problem when churches stayed silent against the racism that is affecting black and brown communities because the one thing that gets me is this, you ain't go, you ain't got no problem taking the black man's dollar. You have no problem taking the brown man's dollar and yet will not address the issues that are at hand in both of those communities of color. And so this is the reason why I say that things are on the line. And this is the reason why we need to vote because things are on the line. Things are on the line. Your life is on the line. You know, what's going to happen with this country is on the line. Because the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to every people. And I get both sides of the aisle. I get the fact that you feel as though that we need to have more family values. But the thing that I will say about the Bible and about family values, the, 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 the face of the families have changed. That's the God knows truth. The one thing that I will say about the Bible is this, is that the Bible is not politically correct, but the church can be progressive. That's the one thing I will always say, but the word of God is true. And as a man of God, I will never, I will never stop preaching the truth of God, even if it cuts me, even if it kills me. Because the one thing that I know about the word of God is that the same word that can cut me is the same word that can heal me. The same word that can kill me is the same word that can resurrect me. I will not stop preaching the Bible. I don't care what community says so. Black community, white community, brown community, Asian community, Italian, it don't matter. LGBTQ plus community, I will not pre- stop preaching the word. And that's the God knows truth because God has called me and called us to preach his word. And I can't stop because of community. But the one thing that I will say is this, is that I've seen the church be progressive. And if the church can be progressive, that means people can be progressive. That means that I can love my neighbor as myself. That means that I can take and alleviate the fear. But here's the one thing that you got to realize is that when you are voting for your conscience, you have to look at what is being said. What is being said over the airwaves? What is being said over media? Because we have heard a whole lot of stuff. They done dug up Joe Biden's past. They done dug up stuff from President Trump. And the thing about President Trump is this, is that he has current stuff. So my my thing is, yeah, you could talk about what Biden said in the past all day long, but how you going to get past shithole countries? How you going to get past fire them sons of bitches? How you going to get past what he told the police? Oh, don't be nice. 
you know, bang their head a little bit, talking about the criminals. And the whole, when the looting shot starts, the shooting starts. How do you get past that? Because you got to look at the cold words. You got to begin to look at the language because the one thing that I've always said is this, is that racism is and always will be a team sport. And that's the God knows truth because one person can't be a team by themselves. Either we work together as a team or we buy or we die by default. That's the God knows truth. And so It is time for us as black people, as Hispanic people to get our houses together and we got to begin to line up with the agenda that's going to promote our community. That's the God knows truth. So, you know, my thing is look at the words that are being said. Seriously, look at the words that are being said today. And that's the God knows truth. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland? Are you prepared to to specifically do it? I would say say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right wing. So what are you you, you saying? I'm I'm willing to do anything. I want to see peace. Then do it, sir. Say it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right Would you like me to condemn white white proud supremacists boys. and right the proud militia? Boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right his wing own, problem. This is FBI a left wing. Dir- there it is, right there. There it is, right there. But the one thing that you got to look at it when you listen to it, the moderator said it first. Tell him to stand back. And then he repeats to stand back, stand by. But the thing is, is that you have to look at what was said about Charlottesville. Good people on both sides and a lot in a life died. And then you have to look at the Breonna Taylor case. How is it that you have a black attorney general that can justify the murder of a black woman and help cover the police? And that is what I mean about black privilege, shielding white privilege and white supremacy. That's the God knows truth. So you got to begin to ask yourself, what am I voting for? Because I ain't going to lie. When we saw George Floyd and the outrage behind it, we actually thought that that was going to be the end. But it wasn't. Because we didn't had a whole lot of stuff happen since George Floyd. And that's the whole, that's, I ain't going to lie. That is the thing that puzzles me the most. And the crazy thing is, is that we can have all of these good gestures, but we need some policy. I don't need a Black Lives Matter moral painted on the street. I need policy that's going to talk about my black life mattering. And it has to be specifically for people with melanin in their skin, uh, African descendants of slaves. That's what we need. We need policy specifically for black people because I'm going to tell you this. Anytime you get something started that's going to help the black community, a white woman always manages to get her foot in there and say, hey, I'm being oppressed too. I'm just like the black man. Really? Please. You participated in in, in having the slaves over here. You benefited white woman from, from, from slavery and white privilege and Jim Crow. You benefited from it. And then the crazy thing about it is that you you have the power to weaponize your white privilege. You can get a man, you can get a black man killed. We've seen that in history. You can get a black man arrested. We've seen that in history as well. Look at the Central Park Five, now the Exonerated Five. And that's the God knows truth. Because the crazy part about all of this is, that I want you to see is that is what is on the line. And that's the God knows truth. Who's going to stand for the people. I get the fact what the Republicans want. I get the fact of what the Democrats want, but who is going to stand by our nation and our people? I'm serious. Who's going to stand by? Who's going to cry for, for our community? Because I'm going to tell you this, 
we have to begin to do this thing not only on the federal level, but we have to do it on the local level. Because I live in a city that the elected officials here, they bought into the whole lie. And I told you that. They bought into the lie of nigger and allowed jump out squads that do that didn't do a damn thing except terrorize the black community and black people because you never saw a jump out squad in the suburbs on the outskirts of Wilmington harassing white people. You never saw that, but it was always white cops. You have all of these white cops that don't want to do community policing, that don't want to walk the beat, but want to be able to patrol uh, black areas, and they don't even live here. But the one thing that you ain't going to see, you ain't going to see black cops in a white neighborhood congregating, patrolling, harassing. You ain't going to see that. But you'll see it here in the city of Wilmington. You'll see it here on Market Street. That's the God knows truth. But you ain't going to see that over in Westover Hills. You ain't going to see it over in Greenville. And so this is the reason why I say that everything is on the line. Our kids are on the line. And I ain't going to sit up here and be one of these prophets and try to predict the election. Seriously, I'm not going to do that. That's not my lane. It ain't my lane yet. But it ain't my lane right now. But the one thing that I will tell you is this, is that you have got to begin to see What is on the line? Because we have black people, and the crazy thing about all of this is that I don't understand. I really don't understand how you can be black and just, you know, turn your head and just look the other way at some of our current president's things that he has said. Now, granted, the First Step Act, but my question is, what about the judges? And then you have to go into the the intricacies of the First Step Act. What happens if, if they, you know commit an offense again. Are they going back to jail? Seriously, I want to know that one. Because all we see is this, in the fact that the only people that he wants to, that our current president wants to deal with is celebrities. I don't get that. I'm serious. When it comes to plans for black people, why is it that you only want to talk to celebrities? Why is it that you want a celebrity on your side, but yet you ignore the cries and the bills of the Congressional Black Caucus? That's my question. Because at the end of the day, you have to see what is on the line. Seriously, you have to begin to see what is on the line. And it's a whole lot of stuff on the line. Our lives, our wealth, our well-being, and then the whole thing about this coronavirus. Seriously. What is going on with that? Because you got to begin to see the fact that this whole coronavirus thing could have been dealt with, but it wasn't. We slept on it. Our president slept on it. Our president told lies about it. And you had men of God and people of God talking about it's going to be over this day. It's going to be over. No, this thing is the judgment of God. I don't care what anybody says. This is the judgment of God because I look at it like this. It's not like we have not been praying. We have been praying. It's not like the fact that we haven't been, you know, asking God why. But the one thing that I will say is this, is that we have been disobedient. We haven't followed through on what the Lord has told us in scriptures. And the the fact of the matter is we haven't prioritized the flock of God. And because we haven't prioritized our families, we haven't prioritized the house of God, we haven't prioritized God's people, and we begin to exploit that and begin to mix the Bible and nationalism and say that we are called to protect the Constitution You really think that God wasn't going to judge that? Because judgment begins at the house of God. So my question is, what do you think? Every person that has tried to predict this thing has been wrong. From the White House to the church house. And nobody can get a pinpoint 
accuracy on this disease because, well, virus rather, I can't call it a disease, it's a virus. Nobody can get a handle on this daggone virus because it's different in each person. That's the God knows truth. It's different. And then the thing is, is that there was a saying that, you know, the kids can't get it and kids started to get it. Kids started to get it and then they started to pass it on to their relatives and, and, the, and the adults in the family. And then the adults end up getting it and some of them ended up dying. And these are the things that is on the line. So we can't sit up here and listen to people that say, oh man, my vote don't matter. Ah, da, 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 da. Well, look, I'm going to tell you this. Every voice and every vote matters. Because if you sit up here and you stay home, you ain't got no right to complain. And if you sit up here and stay home, you are complacent and you are okay with the conditions that are okay right now. Because the Bible says, happy is the man that that condemneth him, him that condemneth not himself in that which he alloweth. So if you allow it, don't complain and don't condemn yourself. Happy is the man that condemneth himself not in the thing that he alloweth. And I'm just paraphrasing scripture. You are a happy man. Don't condemn yourself because you're allowing it to come through the door. You can't get mad and you can't complain. Because if you're allowing it, be happy with it. And that's the God knows truth. And I hear people saying, well, you know, I'd rather deal with the devil that I know. It's still a devil. It's still a devil. And what do you do with devils? You cast them out. I'd rather deal with the devil than I know than the devil that I don't know. Really? Because we didn't know him. All we saw was him talking about President Obama. That's the God knows truth. And we have had people say that concerning our pre- our current president, President Trump. But what was President Trump doing? He was this whole thing with the birth of movement. I want to see Obama's birth certificates. Well, we needed to see your taxes. <laughs> we finally got that. $750. But yet the crazy thing about it is that during President Obama's uh, presidency, he was called Antichrist. I even saw a video of him hanging from a noose burning in front of a church. In front of a church. And then this whole thing about, oh, he's a Muslim, he's this, he's that. And the crazy thing about it, that has stoked the whole thing of where we are right now. And here's the one thing that I can say that I am thankful for with this current president because President Obama could not do this as eloquent and as bad as I thought that he was. He could not drain the swamp and bring the racism to the top and expose the racists and expose the racism that has been hidden in our nation for years. President Obama couldn't do that. But President Trump could. And the one thing that I that that I admire is that he has brought us to a place where we as the church are praying. And that's the God knows truth. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, man, we have got to pray. Because the Bible says that we are supposed to pray for those who are in authority over us that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. It ain't been quiet and it ain't been peaceable. That's the God knows truth. We ain't had no peace. Not collectively, maybe individually, but not collectively. So you got to begin to see what is happening today. How is it that, you know, votes can be suppressed? How is it that, you know, the the courts are being, you know, banged on hard? You need to throw out these votes. We ain't trying to have no uh, uh, drop off vote. We ain't trying to have no voting by mail. We are in the midst of a pandemic. And you mean to say that you rather have people standing in line? So, 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 you know, I mean that right there. Seriously. That right there. But you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to stand in line. I don't, man, please. I'm going to be at them polls soon as they open. Because at this point right now, yo, we are in the end game. And that's the God knows truth. We're in the end game. And the one thing that I want you to know is this, is that if we are in the end game, yo, it is up for grabs. It is up for grabs. And we as a people, we got to be able to conduct ourselves and be ready, even if it don't go our way. 
Because here's the one thing that I'm going to say, even if it don't go our way, we still got to persevere. We still got to press through. And we still got to get our communities in line and get them together and get them together like no, like, like, like never before. And that's the God knows truth. Because the crazy thing is, man, yo, it's a whole lot of crazy stuff on the horizon. And we ain't done with this pandemic yet. It's the new normal, but we ain't, we ain't learned how to really adjust. And that's the God knows truth. Things are still open. Things are still questionable. And now they talking about firing Dr. Fauci. Really? You going to fire Dr. Fauci and, and replace him with who? Seriously. So who, who you going to replace him with? Because at the end of the day, I'm like, yo, you really going to try to p- replace America's best? Who you going to replace him with? Seriously. You going to replace him with Dr. Giggles? Seriously. So, hey, look, all I'm telling you right now is that you need to make up your mind. And that's the God knows truth because I'm going to tell you, man, we have got to come together. We've got to unify like never before. And that's the God knows truth. We have got to unify like never before. Because the things that I have seen in these last four years, the things not only have I seen in our government, but also in churches, because the one thing that I've realized about this whole coronavirus is that it has brought out the motivation of most pastors. Most pastors don't give a flip about their congregation. They give a flip about that building. And you're only there to support them and that building. Seriously. And, and, and it's a shame. And, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, the shepherd is supposed to give his life for the sheep. But instead, you have pastors, they ain't shutting down nothing. And they telling you trust God and they calling everybody else sissies and fearful. And the crazy thing about it is that you're willing to put the people of God on the line knowing that if they get sick, that you can't even go visit them in the hospital. And then, and then the crazy thing is, is that the church building has now become the new idol and the new king is now the pastor who is the new King Nebuchadnezzar. And I, and I talked about that back in season one. But that's what we're seeing right now. You know, the crazy thing is, the Bible says that God has ordained that the powers that be are of God. And the crazy part is, is that when you begin to look at it, when these ordinances were put up, these were men of God that were fighting against the ordinance, fighting against the government, the same government that they saying that we need to support. But they fought against the government and called it an attack against religious freedoms because the Uh, the temporary ordinance in the midst of a pandemic was saying that, Hey, these large gatherings and church buildings needs to close. But yet there were pastors saying, well, look, if grocery stores and target can be open and church can be open. And then after a while, the government's just got tired and say, you know what, man have at it. But here's the one thing that I want you to realize is this, is that if congregants can begin to start suing churches and pastors, if they happen to trace it back, to one of their events or even their congregation, what you going to do? Seriously. But that is the one thing that I began to see. And this is why a lot of churches are online now. I can't say all of them because, hey, some, some pastors, they need that organ. They need that crowd because they like a performer. Seriously. They perform every Sunday. And to be without that stage, which is the church building, and to be without that organ, which is the hype man, how you going to have a show? How you going to have a show Sunday after Sunday, a show but no substance? A show that'll make you feel good, but nothing that's going to uh, instruct you and help you in this season that you're in right now. Because that's what, it's, that's what it is right now. Ain't nothing but a show. 
And my question is, like I've heard bishops say, where are the name dropping prophets? They can pull a name out of a hat. They can pull out an address and a phone number. Where are they at right now? Because we need, we need instructions. We need to know the word of the Lord. We need to know the mind of God. But yet, these are the ones that are silent. Seriously. So, I'm telling you right now, people, you better see who has your back. Because you may think that some of these so-called men of God got your back, but nah, they're going to drag you out into a church that ain't even disinfected. Nobody in there washing their hands. Nobody in there wearing a mask. And then you wonder why you're getting sick. Seriously, check the motivations. Check the motivations in the hearts of men. Because their motivation ain't you. Their motivation might be that building and that paycheck. And this is why I say what I say. Because we got to begin to have somebody who is going to stand for the community of people. Because the church is in the block. Does the church care about the block? That's my question. And we at Truth and Life Urban Ministry, God has given us a call. He said, Leon, I want you to take and create a space and a place where faith and activism can meet. And we as activists, we care about the community. We care about our people. It's not just about this building. It's not just about the vision. It's about the people. Because trust, I may start it, but I ain't going to finish it. I know that. I may have planted it. I may have founded it. I may, yeah, I did all that. But when I close my eyes and I hand this off, I know it's going to be in better hands and they're going to take it further than I, than I could. And that's what I expect. That's what every father expects. You go harder than me. You do better than me. You multiply this daggone platform bigger than what I could ever even dream. And so, Hey, Whoever God chooses to run with this. But the one thing I will say is that you're going to know I was here. And that's the God knows truth. Because at the end of the day, it's about making your mark. And this is the reason why our our, our forefathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers fought and died for us to do what we're supposed to do tomorrow. That's the God knows truth. So to sit up here and stay home, are you kidding me? When you had black people that had to jump through hoops to just go and vote, that were beaten to vote, that were denied, it's an insult to our ancestors. So you get out here, man, you do what you need to do because there is a lot on the line. Walk in the truth that makes you free every day. Follow Brother Leon on all social media outlets.